Hi, welcome back. Today, we're gonna create a natural dye using privet berries. These are the berries found on those bushes and hedges that seem to grow absolutely everywhere. And they not only grow everywhere, but they make a fantastic green natural dye. For today's dye, we're going to use the same process that we've used in my other dye videos, except for one important difference, and that is today I'm going to actually strain the dye stuff out before I add my fiber. I don't normally do this. However, picking these little berries out of your fiber takes forever. Ask me how I know. So it's a very simple process. There's 10 steps, which might seem like a lot, but it's not. Let's see if I can remember them. We are gonna collect the berries, process the berries, simmer the berries, strain and mash the berries, add the mashed berries back into the water to cook again, strain the berries, then add the fiber, change the dye to an alkaline dye bath for a very important reason, add the fiber to the alkaline dye bath, and we're done. Super easy. Okay, let's start off by processing the berries. So for these, I pruned this off of this hedge that started sprouting in my yard. And I obviously do not want to throw all of this into a dye bath. So what I start off doing is just simply, let's see, processing these little berries off of the branches and I use gloves because they will stain your hands, especially if you do a lot at what time, which I actually recommend because you can easily store these berries in your freezer until you're ready to use them. So again, super simple. I'm just going to basically push these little berries off of the stems. If you get some of the stem in there, it's not a big deal. I just want the majority of this to be berry because it will make a difference when you're measuring out your weight. So for instance, if I weighed this, it would be, let's say, seven pounds. I mean, this wouldn't be seven pounds, but it could be seven pounds. And then once you process it, it would be five pounds, which is what happened to me the last time I did this dye when I did a big batch at one time. So you're gonna keep pushing all the berries off of the stems. And then once you're all done doing this process, make sure to weigh your berries. You're going to want to go for a ratio of three to one. So you want three times the weight of berries to the weight of your fiber. If you do two to one, that's probably fine. You just may end up with a paler shade of green. I've done four to one before and I didn't really notice a difference in intensity of color. So that's how I came up with three to one. Of course, the best thing for you to do is to try this and figure out what ratio works best for you. So after you weigh your berries, make sure to write down your amount. Then you simply add these to your dye pot, fill it with, you know, half full of water, and then you're gonna simmer it until you notice that the berries feel, well, maybe not feel, but look juicy and plump because the next step is going to be to squish them. Thank you. 
Okay, I have about half a pot full of water. Now we're gonna simmer and get ready to squish. Okay, squish test complete. We are now ready to strain and squish. I used to stick my hand into the hot dye pot to squish the berries, but as you can imagine, I burn my hands very easily that way. So that's when I came up with this method of straining and then squishing in the strainer with gloves on, because these berries are still pretty hot. This is my favorite part. The reason I'm squishing them is because I'm gonna strain these berries out before I add my fiber in. So this is one method I can use to make sure that all the dye potential in the berry is going to be in this dye water. I do everything I can to make sure I'm getting everything I can out of this berry. Once you feel confident you have completely smashed all of that dye goodness out of the berry, you're going to pull all of the stuff out of the strainer and it's gonna go back into the dye pot and we're gonna cook it some more. Again, this is just me making sure that all the dye potential goes from the berry and into the water so that it can then be absorbed into the fiber. And since we originally only added about enough water for a half a pot, at this point I'm gonna add in more water because once I add my fiber in, I wanna make sure there's enough water for the fiber to move freely. So, to the sink. This has been simmering for a little over 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour, two hours. Really the time isn't all that important it's the color of the dye, even though I would do a minimum of 30 minutes, but you know, wiggle room. So I'm gonna put on my gloves again, and then I'm going to strain for the second time this to get the berries out of the dye. Because like I said, I don't normally do this process of straining, but for this dye, it really is an important step. I will even go so far as to rinse out this pot and then dump my dye back into this pot before I add my fiber. Okay. Pot has been rinsed. I really should have grabbed something to put this in. Hold please. Okay, let's try this again. I should have done this over the dye pot, but that's okay. I'll just add it in when I'm done. See, I'm not used to straining. This is a whole extra step and I'm not practiced at it. Okay. I now have a very free dye that is just about ready for my fiber. And to make sure I get all of the dye in there, I'm 
I'm going to just give an extra squish to the berries, not let anything escape. Even this last little bit. Okay, this die is now ready for my fiber. So let's talk about fiber. I'm using two different types of wool fiber today. I'm using a regular 100% wool and I'm using a superwash wool. What I really like about privet berries is they absorb into the fiber differently so you'll get different shades of green. This is actually typical with, I would say, most natural dyes. If you use a non-superwash and you use a superwash, the dye is going to absorb into those fibers in a different rate or absorption or saturation. You get the point. That's because with superwash wool, they put it through a process which sort of strips away that outer layer. I think it's called the sheath of the fiber. So the dye absorbs in and makes a more saturated color. Because I knit with both types of fiber, I dye with both types of fiber. So we will just add both in now for the first stage of our dye. At this point, I'm going to give you a warning. The color of the dye is not going to be the color of the yarn. You are going to put the fiber in and think, wow, this is an amazing purple. And you're gonna pull that fiber out and it's going to be gray. Now, if you can figure out how to make that purple stick, please let me know, because I haven't figured it out yet. That's why we're going to do a second step to this dye and make it alkaline. But first, we dye it. So my goal is to simmer this again for another 30 minutes to an hour. And then once I see that it's become a decent enough gray, I'm gonna pull it and then we're going to change the dye back and make it alkaline with the use of washing soda. So this has been simmering for close to 45 minutes and I'm ready to pull it. Um, it actually also boiled a little bit you normally do not want to boil your dye. That high temperature can not only affect the color of the dye, but can also felt your wool. But sometimes it happens. So hopefully it'll be okay. We'll see. Let me move this out of the way. And you're gonna see once I pull this yarn out, why we are going to do the second step of this dye. It's going to fall out. Oops. One. This is very uninteresting brownish gray color. But once we make the bath alkaline using washing soda, it is going to turn a gorgeous green. Oops. Okay, I have my washing soda here. And I have my pH strips. These are important so that you can gauge how alkaline your dye bath is. So I'm gonna add a couple of teaspoons until my pH balance goes up to eight or nine. Yeah, eight or nine. As you can see, the dye bath is just this kind of purplish red. And then watch what happens when I add the washing soda.
beautiful green. And let's check the pH. So I'm looking for eight or nine. That looks like nine. Perfect. One more stir to make sure that all of that washing soda has completely dissolved into the dye bath because I want it in the dye bath and not sticking to the yarn. And I can now add my yarn back in. This first skein is the, there's a little bug on there. This first skein is the non-superwash, so it's just 100% wool. I'm dipping it in, and then look what happens when I pull it out. That is so cool! Okay, let's do the next one. This is the superwash. Ooh, this is still pretty hot, so I'm gonna use the spoon to help. You can see that the effect of the alkaline dye on the skein is immediate. It goes from that drab grayish color to green. Instantly. So at this point, I'm going to turn the heat down very low, or you can turn it off because once this dye becomes alkaline, it really can felt at a higher rate than before. So I don't want it to boil at all, and I definitely don't want it to simmer. I just want it to soak in that hot dye and completely absorb. You can pull it out after a half an hour, you can leave it in, Overnight, it's totally up to you. This is one of my favorite dyes. That color is so cool. Let's talk about the results from yesterday's dye. This was the non-superwash, and this one was the superwash. Notice the difference in color. That's because with superwash wool, they remove that outer layer of the fiber. So the dye has a much easier time absorbing into the fiber. That means you often get a more saturated color when dyeing. And this is especially true when you dye with privet berries. However, this is not the color I normally get. This is the color I normally get when dyeing using superwash wool. I think what happened was yesterday when I let the dye boil, it did affect the color. Berries in general are very sensitive to a high heat, which is why you have to be careful to not let it boil. So I'm guessing this is what happened with this color. Now I wanna show you a few more examples of when I've dyed with privet berries in the past. This is another example of using a super wash wool. This is a DK weight, while this is a fingering weight. And here's an example of dyeing with non-superwash wool, but this I used a gray base of a wool instead of the normal white base. And then finally, mohair. So you can see that when you're dyeing with privet berries, if you use a variety of different fibers, you can get a variety of different colors. I hope that was helpful. Thank you again for watching. I really should have grabbed something to put this in. Hold please. So you need to get off camera and come back. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> no, no, I, all the way off camera and then come back. All right. <laughs> oh God. Okay, hold on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's try this again.